Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be installing a Boss Audio 7 inch touchscreen. This is going to be replacing my factory touchscreen and my truck, which is a 2500 HD classic. It's a 2007, it has the stock radio still in it, uh, but it does have the steering wheel controls and the Bose audio system, which is important because if you have those two things, you will have to get a special wiring harness to connect to the steering wheel and to the factory amplifier, which is this right here, part number being the CSGMC2. So what else we have here is a um, USB and a USB-C port. We are gonna be replacing that with one of my uh, stock cigarette outlets. We got a Boss Audio camera here and then another camera off of Amazon because this touchscreen actually is capable of having two different cameras, uh, which we'll be running on the bed back here and then one on the very back. And then we also have all the trim pieces that we might need. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the wiring harness out of the radio and take this wiring harness, get them mated together by soldering the wires. Last time, I just pushed the wires together and put heat shrink on them. Um, which caused the audio to short out every so often when I was driving down the road. So I pulled out my other wiring harness out of my Ford F-250 and soldered it together. After I did that, no problems. So we're gonna start by soldering that together and then after that, we will start putting it into the truck. So let's get right to work. The wiring harness is all put together now. This is the Boss Audio wiring harness with all the um, stuff labeled like that. Uh, the other wiring harness, it is all labeled, as you can see right there on the wires themselves. So it makes it a little bit harder to see, but that's all good now. We've got the steering wheel. This is the steering wheel control. This is your amplifier, I believe. And this is also for the amplifier here. So that all runs into this box right here, which will be behind your stereo. And then this harness plugged into the factory harness the truck has. So I have already pulled out my factory radio, pulled off the dash. If you don't know how to do this, super easy. You uh, turn your key on, put this, or put your, uh, your transmission in the lowest gear possible, which should be first. Mine is second because I have my trailer control box here. And then you just grab it, pull gently around where all the clips are. And the hardest one is your steering wheel. You have to drop your steering wheel all the way down and then you have to kind of finagle it out of there. And then you remove the three bolts here, which is super easy. And then you remove the wiring harness and you have to push down on this gray tab really hard. You can see the little hook right there on the back side of it. And your radio, uh, or your antenna has is back here. You have to just yank on it and unplug it. It feels like it's gonna break, it's not going to. And uh, then you have to add this extension in there because the factory one is too small. So you have to have this bigger one for your radios. So, dash over there. Truck's name is Heather, apparently. So, thought that was interesting. And then I have to pull this out, which is just yanking it straight out, or I did that too. And I'm going to remove this outlet over here because this outlet has constant power. So I want it, I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to remove the one that does not have constant power. And uh, I will probably also, I might try to move it over here because this one has the lid on it and I think it just looks cleaner. So that is the next thing to do is to add the uh, USB ports and put in the radio.
as you can see, we got the radio installed. I had to switch out the wiring harnesses, got everything put together. Uh, radio, everything like that worked good. Steer or uh, My speakers worked good, but my steering wheel controls were all messed up. So I contacted Clutchfield, is the people I bought it from. They sent me out this one, and I returned the other one. Um, got it all put in. This one has a programmer on it. The other one only had dip switches, and none of the dip switches at, uh, fixed or connected with my steering wheel controls. So I programmed the new one. It was really easy. All you do is uh, turn on your key, your ignition, wherever my key is. Turn on your ignition. On the back side of the programmer, there is a little like program button. You tap that program button, wait for it to turn green, and then whenever you do, you hit your volume and everything should be good after that. If you have any problem, Clutch Field has a very good customer service. I'll turn down here. It has a very good customer service and uh, they were very help helpful. So what I'm gonna show you all now is inside of the radio. Um, I made sure Apple CarPlay worked. I got that hooked up to the USB here. And then the USB-C down here is just for charging. Um, we're gonna go in here and look at the cameras. Cameras, turn on my front camera and the power to it. So when I go into cameras, that's my reverse camera. I have to adjust the angle because I, I was doing it by myself. Uh, and as you can see, it's crooked. And then same with my bed camera, it's completely upside down. But uh, I'm gonna go adjust those here in a second when I finish buttoning, it, buttoning up everything. What else we have on here? So we have Apple CarPlay, can't connect to it because I don't have it plugged in right now. You got your cameras. Whenever you put your vehicle in reverse, it will kick on the reverse camera as long as you wire it up correctly. Um, we got an SD card, AVN, and then you got your regular radio here. I'm not gonna tap on it because it, it's gonna have music. Um, and then you have your settings here, Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff. So very happy with how it came out. Uh, the only thing I do want to say and let y'all know is with the wiring harness, you have to make sure you hook up your, um, it's the power to your subwoofer or your factory amp. And it's on the wiring harness to the speaker and then also on the wiring harness to the, um, the factory wiring harness. If you don't have those hooked up, you're going to get no sound. It's, I believe, a blue and white wire. But if you look at the manuals, it will tell you exactly which wire it is to get that fixed. Bed camera right there it's a flush mount I put the flush mount up there because I didn't want to break it off if I ever slid anything against it and then here on the back bumper I put this adjustable one it has a little little screw at the very top you can move it and then you can turn it whatever way you need it still need to adjust that a little bit but I have to have someone else here to help me those were pretty simple two wires ran from there under the frame into the cab I pulled them through the firewall up there here in this dark corner then I ran them under the dash and then up to the head unit. The next thing I did was wire this. This just has two USB ports running out the back of it. Um, you have to pull this, just yank on it pretty hard, it'll pop out. That fits in there. You need a little bit of trimming, but it's not much. Runs up to the back and just plugs right in. And the last thing we have is a microphone, which is right here. And that runs up and plugs in. The only other thing you have up there is the wiring harness, which does have a lot of stuff on it because you have your steering wheel controls and your amplifier and all that stuff. You also have the chime module. So if your doors don't beep when you open them, um, you plug that in and you can adjust the sound and everything like that or the noise level. So the module I finally went with or the wiring harness was the RP5 GM11. I got that off of Clutchfield. Super helpful over there. If you need anything, you give them a call. They'll help you get what wiring harness you need and everything like that. Um, everything else I got off of Amazon, so I'll leave that in the description so that you can find it easier. And then I think that's it. Apple CarPlay works really good in it, very responsive. And uh, 
I'm very happy with it. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. But other than that, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.